Good morning, everyone. My name is Stephen. I'm the founder and the CEO of the project Harmony. Really excited to be here today. Um, we picked the name Harmony because we believe people can sing in different notes, different keys, and still come out to be beautiful music. We are here to hear many of the feedback from you guys today, here to learn. Um, love to get your feedback. Uh, the bottom link is the slides of this talk. We would love to get your feedback and hear good questions today. But let me start with my favorite triangle. It's not the trilemma triangle. Many of you know the trade-off between decentralization, security, and scaling out. Very few people know that there are already research results in solving this. This is my favorite solution triangle to the trade-off. It is really understanding how do we do secure sharding using verifiable public random function that we can actually not just get stuck with a few tens of nodes or hundreds of nodes. The research result already has shown that we can do with thousands of nodes, with thousands of TPS. How many want to bring it to much, much more production level? What we are doing is, in a few months, we, we've, we finally tested it with 41 thousand nodes. What that means is we are the largest after Bitcoin and Ethereum to really test our idea that can we take sharding and solve the scalability problem. And our, we are very positive about it. Now, how to really bring a blockchain to production level is what we do. We are a bunch of infrastructure engineers to really figure out now that we have a research result what, what else do we need to do? We need to take real data, bad, bad testing it with all the histor historical data from Bitcoin, Ethereum, just like financial trading. We really need to look at what are all the possibility with the real data that have happened before. Many people study all these security attacks. We don't want to just put out a test net with like 10,000 of notes and say, hey, why don't you do an audit for me? I'm going to pay you some coins and you write me a report. Or, hey, these are the bounties. Why don't you take it when you find out my bugs? No. We need to do all these adversarial uh, testing as well with simulations, with realistic attacks model. Last part. In papers, in theory, there are all kinds of assumptions and trade-offs in making the parameters. What should be the optimal parameters? We want to optimize that. And that's what production system looks like. In Google or all these big companies, they all need to do that to bring it to the production quality. We are not stopping at 41,000 nodes. We want to go all the way to 100,000 nodes in order to support 100,000 of TPS. The answer to all that have very deep understanding on all the key components. We are talking about how to do cross shard transaction when a client is driving it, someone is dropping off. We are talking about like gigabytes of data we need to transfer between the networks. How do you actually checkpoint it? How do you use more new mathematical encryption, um, zero knowledge proof in order, in order to just encapsulate the state so that light clients can also handle it. All this lies in innovations in many of the key components. We believe the end-to-end -end approach, what Google tech, if not even Apple tech, is what we need to do in really not just a blockchain idea or an ICO project, but to a production network for many of the real application coming. And we're very serious about taking this many proven innovations, we call, in research, in many people following up the work, whether it's about Omniledger, Rapid Chain, even the new work, Block Mania, we want to bring all these innovations to production level, large scale deployment. But 2019 for base protocol is all going to be about figuring out how to do sharding for smart contract. The key insight coming from chain space is really can you separate out execution from verification? with static analysis. 
with static types. You really need to know whether a powerful node is secure and tens, if not hundred other nodes can quickly verify it. But how? How do we even do the sharding to begin with when smart contract stays and the currency is everywhere? You want a static analysis to separate out what parameters it will affect, what contracts it need to pull in, what are the dependencies between all these codes before you even run so that the sharding can depend on it. Now you see the theme of what Harmony is doing. We're really bringing many of the open research, all the projects are open source, even the chain can be forked. You see that it's not really about figuring out just one thing. In this age of open development, we really want to take a core team with vision to productionize many of the research results and bring it to the communities. Whether it's about base protocol or applications, this is our approach. But to us, it's more than just TPS and performance. Can there be more application and smart contract being written by many, many people? The challenges and the questions that we pose here are like this. It's really like, can we scale trust and agreement easily between humans, 10 billion people in the future, if not even 100 billion machines, machine to machine communication? to be possible. Can we actually agree on something for uh, trans transactions and actually know what will happen in the future? Don't you worry about that you disagree with each other. Now that you don't have a government, a law to help you to dispute, can we f foresee the inconsistency in your agreements, in your contracts? It's very much like how a smart contract is safe. Second. Can we rely on humans' intuitions when you're expressing pages and pages of terms and conditions? So that more people can actually write it, not just me, not just a PhD, not just anyone, very much like web applications. What is the HTML JavaScript equivalent to be that easy? Python to be that is easy. And clearly, smart contract has to be much, much easier to write than today. And last, can we actually iterate and do a lot more smart contract without asking our lawyers? As an international companies, without going through all this difference in regional laws, if not even doing the A-B test in your smart contract, deploy and upgrade it, without penalties, without much cost, is what we ask, can smart contract can develop much faster, if not even execute faster? And I've been researching in language design for a long time now, and hopefully Harmony can bring some answers. The first one, the way I can put it is, how do we trust the contracts we you write and to each other? It's very much like, can programming, software engineering, be as safe as Java? Many of you know web application before 2000, it's writing in Perl, you deploy it, it's like a duct tape, you write something, it may overflow, it may crash, you, the, your website is done for a certain period of time, but we are not in that dark age anymore. Much of it thanks to Java Virtual Machine and the ecosystem that comes with it. Web application is now so boringly reliable and it's possible to hack together even an enterprise project with 100 people collaborating together because it is with the safety that many of the static types bring and some of the garbage collection and the formal semantics of what Java virtual machine allow many tools to, to, to be uh, writing together. But there are more to it. To us, the running time checks for many of the global constraints is really lacking in smart contract as well. If you know how a Java machine works, it checks all the stack overflow, bring in a new bytecode from the internet, it will know whether it is signed, whether the class interface is actually compatible. All this has to be done. Just like the analogy for smart contract, of some of the global constraints that's not easy to specify when you just say, hey, did that this account, add that account, add this number, 
to be a global constraint. You do not want your balance to flow to some unknown account because they create a new address on the fly. As a matter of fact, Ethereum can actually have self-modifying code. How can you even reason about it? How can you reason about the gas price, the termination model of smart contract? It's going to be key for us to understand whether at the runtime we can enforce some of the high level constraints and how do you express that. But the holy grail of software engineering, the Turing uh, award winner said that, is also true for smart contract. How do we use formal verification so that before, before you actually deploy it, you already guarantee it's safe. Guarantee, they call it a hacker proof. I am in all this research and business because my professor in college told me in the class, do you want to send your mother-in-law to the space using the rocket software code that you write? Well, depending whether you like her or not, but you definitely want it to be, to, to be sure of the result. And in some way, that's what formal verification gives us. What dependent types mean is, and I work with many of these tools, 12, uh, protocol, verify, and call in my uh, research and thesis. They, what they mean by dependent types is, these types and meaning specification, depending on the program that you're writing, not just on any other types. When you say this number, very much like proofing a theorem. You can say, hey, this statement will make this number not overflow. This statement and this statement together will satisfy these pre and post conditions. These are all the things we need to do in order to get us to be on the safe for the contracts. And that's why I spend lots of time in my research. Um, these are some of the re my research results to be talking about how can we put together all this interoperable implementation when we talk about protocols? How can we understand the runtime behavior and have a static system to do all these checks, even though the people that you're dealing with, whoever calling your contracts, may not be known? But let's also get to the fun part. Can we actually make it as easy as Python? It turns out that syntax really matters. Most people think that, oh, it's all about like, getting the audit and unit test. That's not true. Most programmers only think very locally, looking at how to execute step by steps. If you actually give them syntax, that makes sense. If not simple and minimal, and I have a very good definition for it, human will actually finally get a cognitive focus to understand what are the abstraction that we're looking at. What are the mapping between all these concepts of like deducting accounts and the balance flow in a certain way is what mathematicians have been calling it the isomorphism for a long time. And the invariance, you want to make sure that whether you're going through loops or people calling you, there are things that you can check, the invariance to make it happen. It's what syntax is going to buy us so that you won't be distracted. The syntax itself is not saying that, hey, hash table is different from a finite maps. It's not different from another tree that implements certain things. You want the syntax to be very similar and not in the way what Java gave us, that suddenly it's all about generics and annotating um, all, the, all the type parameters. And in many ways, we need less of things, in particular, less of stateful, mutable changes within the smart contract. People talk about functional programming, immutable data structure. It also applies here. Globally, we know it's an immutable, immutable, um, immutable ledger. Locally, we know that we need some state to implement. We need to update something. But overall, the contra contract and the design needs to be really following the functional calculus if not even process calculus when you're dealing with other agents in order to understand how can we express the concept without just keep talking about variables and states explicitly. And with all that, we, also, we already know from Java we need types. Can we get type inference? 
can we get compiler to do more work for the human? Not one week later or one month later after you deploy or you throw it to your testing team, but day one, the program actually know the invariance. Can you ask type inference, asking the compiler to do more for them to really very much like proving a theorem when they're finished in the program to understand what is the structure of my program? What is the structure of the contract that I'm expressing? Can I have some way to really tame down the complexity of all the logic? And that's what types here, type inference will give you. The last part is most people understand that there are theories and there are practice and there are teams who do all that. Most language don't start with that. We call it a small language, adding a few more features, become a fat language that they cannot slim down ever. What happens is they usually start with something like Scheme or Lisp or even Python, and you say, this is a concept, JavaScript, you tag on a contract, interface to it, and suddenly, now you want to talk about type so that you know that you are calling a say when you're talking to a teammate, it still makes sense, and a month later, all the types when you do refactor, all it makes sense. Now the language has a few more concepts. It's very easy to write a language, very easy to write a compiler for that too. By the time one year in, you want all the features put together without much thought from the very beginning, it's almost what happened to Java. It's amazing, it actually escaped, it actually took lots of theories and design. Java Genera was actually designed with some of the research lab uh, associated with UPenn as well, where I went to really understand we almost started with the wrong thing, but let's get it right. And same thing with C Sharp getting it right um, on the CRL system. Here, back to here, right? Do, if we start with JavaScript today, you know how long it takes to do the next generation of JavaScript. There will be a language that starts with types. And that's my point here. You really need to understand many of the dependencies when you need to specify, whether it's about the information flow for confidential information or integrated variable that you don't want to corrupt. Whether it's about parametricity, they call it, which is a higher order polymorphism for many of the concepts expressing the generics and the template. You want to understand very from the very beginning when you design a language for many people to write a smart contrast. Otherwise, you will not get it right um, yeah, when everyone is piling on it. And that's what I was very passionate about and spent lots of time in my research to understand what are the, even the concrete syntax that we need to know. I write parser generator for fun. They call it the generalized uh, LL parser. So LL parser, I spent a decade working on my language just to understand at that time for AI and high performance competition, it makes so much sense for smart contracts as well. I seriously study many of the language theory because it's not just a one thought how to write one program. It's, you are not writing a program anymore. You're writing a compiler to make program. You're not writing a compiler anymore. You're writing a language that many compilers will be possible and many programs will be expressing it. And in grad school, you go all the way. You actually prove your theory is correct and you write a tool to make that theory is correct. So I've gone through all that exercise. <clears throat> the last part about how to make smart contract fast to develop. I wish I had as much of a story um, to replace lawyers, if not regional laws. But I think we know a lot. OCaml is already the chosen um, tool for many projects. Whether it's Basilica, Tesla, you've probably heard of COD. Uh, it's also written in OCaml, new project, Coda. The SNARK compiler is also written in OCaml. We ha I have been going to grad school and writing, writing in OCaml for 15 years, 12 years of it, full time on OCaml. Knowing the entire tool chain so usable because you can compile to native code and you can run tests in less than a second. Human iteration speed. Human speed, that's what I call it. Human instant real time speed. But most of all, <clears throat> functional programming, if not a good compiler and tool set, will give you the following. They call it the declarative style so that the implementation have much freedom. Most of the time, it's about how to man uh, manage your memory. It turns out that many of the parallelization strategies, Haskell did very well, 
that you only need to specify the functional constraint and dependencies, that you can make it fast to run anywhere. But now we're talking about transaction in a, in a different dependency. It's not linear order. It's direct acyclic, as you guys know. Can we actually put it in a multi-core and execute and validate many of the transactions using more like graph approach? And last of all, tie back to the topic I started with. Can we actually now do all the sharding algorithm just by you expressing what the contracts would do in a declarative style and come back asking the compiler to tell you the static dependencies? And the answer has to be yes. I believe that smart contract can both be beautiful and secure at the same time. Just give you a quick glance of what many of the financial um, industry need to be writing in black, black scones. It's a very uh, small example because as you guys know, good language is actually great when writing complex, big programs, thousand lines of code. When you're working with tens, if not, hundreds of people. By the way, writing a smart contract, you guys are, because the hackers will look at the source code and actually work with you if you don't know your uh, host. So this is just a glimpse of what the syntax, what some of the concepts look like, not what a language can do. If you guys are language geek, you know, people only talk about few Fibonacci, but they don't talk about many things beyond it because it's very hard to articulate. It turns out economists use this to compare languages because that's what they write every day. Here, you see that you don't need to specify all the types when you're doing computation, but it's great to use as an annotation at the top level, but very lightweight. You only tell me it's uh, real numbers. You only tell me about the structure of the types, and I can easily derive in the rest. And as you can tell, whether you're in Unicode or you're in the indentation, you can be very lightweight. It's almost how a mathematician would express the formula. Almost the same, actually. And you see one of the functions I'm just calling out to be the CDF of the normal distribution because you can also assign variable to a function as well and have the types for it as well, not just a simple state variable. All this tie back to can we ask more people to express very, very important concept and contracts, con uh, con uh, contracts in, this, in a language like this. And to me, I really wish I can find a better example. The hardest example of, of a language usually is the compiler itself. And in the compiler itself, the type checkers and the type analysis, meaning how to analyze the program before you run it, is usually the most complicated code. So in the link, I actually show my uh, type checker of the mean language, even though I'm still developing it, it's a little bit messy. In language design, we have a saying. If it type checks, it works. In Haskell, probably you guys heard about it before. Hopefully for smart contract, if it type checks, it's secure, it's hack-proof for us. Very last slide, um, we're a team of 10 now. We're very excited to talk to many of you in this conference. Um, we spent quite the last few months to bring this group of amazing engineers from all these big companies to really think about not just about a project, what do we want, really want to build in the next few years to bring the quality of all these toolings and research to production quality? We think that it really takes a lot more large-scale infrastructure mindset, large-scale deployment to make it work. But we talk about the values of our company a lot too, really hearing from people, the empathy of it. Really, are you passionate about something to really change the world, so to speak? but the excellency of our work, hopefully we show it here. Um, I got my email here. I do think that um, in the system design, Rust is going to be really capturing some space. If you're a Rust engineer, there's so much work to be done at the system tooling that I mentioned. Obviously, we have the research, bring the research to production, research, political research will be amazing. If you like language and geek out on language design, whether compiler or form of verification, it's exciting time to be in blockchain. I have been dreaming to do, to do a startup on my PhD topic forever until now. To do the next generation blockchain, it really takes a lot more 
economic design and system level innovation, compilers understanding and language design. Please join us. Um, the, the link of this talk and the slide is on the slash talk. On slash sharding, we talk a lot more about our technical approach, some notes on the research, and also our focus and hopefully collaboration with people in the research space. TGI is what we do every Thursday from our team. I have my entire founding team of six people all met of a gathering I do every week. I've been running for a year and a half now um, uh, in South Bay, Sunnyvale. Um, our team is based in close by, uh, uh, Sunnyvale and Cupertino. Hopefully you will join us. It's a bunch of uh, fellow entrepreneurs really talking about ideas to really brainstorm about what's the latest research, how to be building startup, and I think that's why the team is excited. Even in a few months, we bond really strongly together. And that's all, that's all I have today. Thank you.